Welcome to this edition of Backstage Pass with Leah Chang. Today I'm at the Museum of Broadway where the Gingerbread House competition winners have just been announced. Hello and welcome to the Museum of Broadway. I'm Danny. We're very excited to have you here, Eric. And we're so excited that we're open. Please come visit us in the heart of Times Square at Broadway and 45th. Come celebrate the history of theater and Broadway in New York City with us. And we're excited, Eric, you're about to announce the winners of the Winter Wonderland Gingerbread House competition. And we are excited because you will be able to come and see the winning houses here on display yes. at the museum till the end of the year. So please come visit us. Yeah. Eric, you're about to say the winners, yes? Yes, I am, Dave. Okay, take thank it you, away. Thank you, thank you. Um, first of all, I'm Eric McMillan McCall. I'm founder and CEO of Project One Voice and the host of Project One Voice Live. Um, these amazing gingerbread houses are going to be on display until the end of the year in two places. So you can see just a sampling of them here at the Museum of Broadway, which is in the heart of Times Square. I love this museum, I love this museum. Um, I wanna thank all the people here at the Museum of Broadway for allowing us to do this live presentation. I also like to thank um, all the incredible crew members at our store, um, that store 545, located at 93rd and Columbus here in New York City, where you can see the rest of these incredible winter wonderland gingerbread houses. So, so how, do, how do you vote? This is how you vote. So if you were voting for the online winner, you could just go on to the IG of any of the um, 15 shows that we had on display and you can um, like them. And each like equaled one vote. So to vote in store, we um, numbered each of the gingerbread houses and you pick the corresponding number, and you can go inside the store and vote. So that was really fantastic for us. We also included, included this year QR codes. So you could go to the QR code and you can find out more information about the shows, you can buy tickets, you can just become a fan like me of all the shows. And, and if you love Broadway like I do, you had just a chance to just, just, um, just celebrate like I do all the wonderfulness that is Broadway. So without further ado, let's get to the winners. So our online winner was, drum roll please, <laughs> Hamilton. Hamilton won the online. Wasn't this design incredible? I mean, look at this. I mean, you've got characters from, from the show and Mariah is in the back just checking everybody out. So. They had more than, they had over 15,000 likes. So in total, online, we had over 50,000 people around the entire world who saw, who viewed us on, on IG, who may have seen um, some of the social media posts. So that was really, really incredible for, for us. Second winner, the in-store winter winner. Now that was a really, really, um, really cool contest because again, it's all of you participating. So the winner of the on the in-store competition was, or is, Into the Woods. Yay! Look at, look at this. Now, Into the Woods, it's closing in January, but it's going out on the national tour. So, but look at this design. These are all the houses that are into the woods. I saw it at City Center and I saw it on Broadway. It was absolutely incredible. So these are two extraordinary Broadway shows that are being celebrated with in gingerbread houses. So what we did this year, we, we had these amazing gingerbread house kits at the store. And I said, you know, what if we sent these gingerbread houses to all the Broadway shows and we asked them to do Broadway themed gingerbread houses. And this is the result. So Broadway is more than just singing and dancing. These are people who are creative both on stage and behind the scenes and that much more. So come visit the gingerbread houses at the Museum of Broadway. Yes, please come visit us, come see them. Happy holidays, everyone, and thanks for participating in the competition. Yeah, yeah, we hope that's to see it. you soon. Yeah, and don't forget to see them at, at our store at 93rd in Columbus and at the Museum of Broadway, right, Danny? Yes. All right. Yes, hope to see you soon. Yeah, and we'll see you next year for the third annual <laughs> Winter Wonderland Gingerbread House Contest, right? Yes. Have a good one. Bye-bye.
Hi, my name is Taylor Evans. I'm a brand ambassador here at the Museum of Broadway, and we here at the Museum of Broadway would like to congratulate the winners of the Gingerbread House competition, Hamilton and Into the Woods. I'd always wanted to write a play about the Cambodian women in my life. My Matt, my, my Mings, my Oms, my Mongs. And uh, I've always been in awe of, you know, their complexity, how much they've been through um, war, genocide, a tremendous loss of life, um, and how they still have their feet under them, how they laugh how they outrageously laugh. Um, these people who had that sense of humor to sort of um, get through life, to cope, to, to move forward. I think the play is about a matriarch who has passed and her two adult daughters, sisters, have to figure out what to do. The elder is a Southern Baptist uh, Christian who would like to bury her mother and the younger sister is a Theravada Buddhist um, who would like to cremate her mother. Obviously it's about their good intentions, how they desire to honor their mother and you know I think that each of us as human beings we, we develop a, a, a system of beliefs that we hold in our hearts, our brains, our bodies and when they come into direct contact with people, and in this case, people that we know so intimately that we share history with, I think we can sense danger and we can retreat or we can lean in and go fully in. And so um, this play is about that and how we can ultimately honor um, this one person who has meant so much to these two sisters. It's a dream to be in rehearsals. That is the end game in many ways, for me at least. The opportunity to be in a space with collaborators, with people who get to dream on your story with you, I mean, that's a fucking dream. These collaborators, these actors, they get it. They just get it, you know? They, they understand the sense of humor, um, the sort of drama on comedy on drama on comedy. And they're funny, like they are funny, which is, you know, a dream to just get to laugh in rehearsal all day long. So when I think about an audience sitting in that house and, and sort of stirring in their seats and something really intense is set on stage and they're like, oh, should I laugh? Should I cry? Should I hoop over? Like all the things. I embrace, you know, an audience member to do all those things um, because uh, that is actually what it is to be a human being and to witness this Cambodian family just make fools of each other. <laughs> you know, like that, that's amazing to me. That's the dream.
The Tony Award-winning Alley Theatre is kicking off the multi-city regional theatre co-production of Lauren Yee's Cambodian Rock Band. The signature theatre production of Cambodian Rock Band is co-produced with Berkeley Repertory Theatre, ACT Theatre, Fifth Avenue, and Center Theatre Group. Helmed by Che Yu, Cambodian Rock Band runs from January 20th through February 12th and features songs by Dengue Fever. The cast of Cambodian Rock Band includes Obi winner Joe No, Gina Quintos, Moses Villarama, Lucille Lortel Award and Obi Award winner Francis Jew, Abraham Kim, and Jane Lee. The Broadway production of Arthur Miller's Death of a Salesman opened to rave reviews at the Hudson Theatre on October 9th and will play a limited run through January 15, 2023. Following its critically acclaimed run at London's Young Vic Theatre and on the West End, Arthur Miller's Death of a Salesman is told for the first time on Broadway from the perspective of a Black family. This vibrant and timely production is directed by Miranda Cromwell, who co-directed the London production alongside Marianne Elliott. to borrow Pearson Olivier Award winner and 2022 Tony Award nominee Sharon D. Clark reprised their roles as Willie and Linda Lohman, and they are joined by Chris Davis as Biff, McKinley Belcher III as Happy, and Tony Grammy and Emmy Award winner Andre DeShields as Willie's brother Ben. The cast also features Blake DeLong, Lynn Hawley, Grace Porter, Kevin Ramasar, Stephen Stocking, Chelsea Lee Williams, and Delaney Williams. <laughs> Oh 
that there's a certain immortality in the theater, not given by books or monuments, but with the knowledge an actor takes with them to their dying day, that on a certain afternoon in the dusty theater, they cast the shadow of a being that was not themselves. For the distillation of everything, all that they had ever observed, all the unsingable heart songs that the average man feels but never utters. Mm -hmm. yeah. We gave voice to. Yes. And hopefully in doing that, somehow join the ages. Mm -hmm. We hope tonight to join the ages. A point of personal privilege, please. When this play was written, a young man came from New Orleans. To, uh, to be a photographer. Mm -hmm. He decided to go home and raise his three boys mm -hmm. in New Orleans, one of which is me. Mm -hmm. He fought for this country and loved it when it didn't love him back. Mm -hmm. But he gave me the most precious thing ever, love and time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> moment in time to my father, 97 years old. <laughs> Welcome to this edition of Backstage Pass with Leah Chang. Today, I'm at the New York Historical Society, where the exhibition Black is Beautiful, the photographs of Tommy Brathwaite is currently on view through January 15, 2023. This exhibition is exquisite. Thank you. Exquisite. Thank you. I understand that your father lives in New York, but has not had the chance to see it. What do you think uh, is going to be his reaction when he sees all of these big as life or bigger than life? You know, I, I'm really excited for him to be able to come and be in this space and really enjoy the exhibition. He had always imagined his work at this scale. Um, I remember even when I would work with him when I was 16 years old, and he was speaking about, you know, we need to be able to get these things, you know, almost the size of a person, right? And so the fact that these largest works are five feet, you know, this one here is five feet by 47 inches, so it's five, you know, five feet by four feet, and the square ones are five feet by five feet. I think for him, it's going to allow him to kind of basically almost even relive these moments, you know, these moments that he captured through his lens. Um, and be able to really experience it. And I, and I love being able to see people experience the work because that's often what happens. You know, you walk into a space and photography has the ability to take you back. You know, it, it, it makes you wax nostalgic. And so I think when you look at these images in these different sizes, anything from like the size of an album cover to these really large scale, beautiful images, it really takes you into the experience and allows you to really think about, you know, what is, why are we looking at this particular subject? What's important about them? What are they thinking? What's their story? And so I love the fact that we're able to do this for him. And I think he's going to be 
extremely exciting. I think when you, you walk into the space, um, you enter kind of the introduction to kind of what black and beautiful really means, uh, both from the historical significance of the active part of the movement, but also what the visual representation represents. And then you move into kind of the ideology, right? Which is think black by black. And the ways in which they wanted to kind of promote messages of self-sufficiency, you know, recirculate with black power, um, of having an ideology and a thought process that was um, something that builds you up rather than pulls you down. And then ultimately the grand dance models who are really the representation, the visual representation of um, you know, the establishment of like what people now refer to as black girl magic and you know, all of that. I think they are the epitome of this movement, really um, showing them they're, they're living their lives, they're activists, they're educators, they're people from the community, they're sometimes celebrities, you know, just by chance, but I think they're people who live this um, kind of mantra in the Black and Beautiful that embrace their African ancestry and also just wanted to build the community that, was, that they were a part of. And so, I love the fact that you get to see, you know, imagery, you get to experience some of the clothing that they wore, you get to see some of the flyers that they used, some of the music that they listened to. And so I think it's a multimedia experience that will put you back kind of in time and, and allow you to kind of really appreciate what they did for us today. And what did it mean to you, for you to put this exhibition together? It, it's pretty incredible to be able to go and really think about um, your parent or your parents or people that you grew up with learn you know knowing in a, in a you know father child or parent situation but understanding them as human beings as an adult myself understanding my perspective as, as a father understanding his perspective as a, a father an activist an, an artist um, it's been absolutely incredible, and it's, it, it's, I feel like I've gotten to know him as a man. Um, and so, for me, it's been incredibly important. It's, you know, I, I'm passionate about it, as you can probably tell. It comes out, and, you know, I can talk about this for hours. And, and I really love the fact that because of this, now things are happening like, you know, there was a documentary about the, the work that they're doing that one can. And, that was, you know, Dr. Rain was put together by a group of people who wanted to represent what was happening here. Um, the Grand Asset Models are now back together and doing work, and they're going to be doing a talk here in November. And so, those things really make me happy. And I, 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 in me being able to shed a light on my father's legacy, it's also shedding a light on all these other people and the legacies that they've left behind as well. Wonderful. That was a really powerful statement, and it was throughout Harlem and other communities around the country that were really trying to support that Garvey uh, movement. So you see it here, it's the same sign, Black, 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 and it's, and it's and oftentimes even in some of the shows they would have it there. So it was, it was really a core principle. Um, and it's actually still something to this day that is that is something we talk about, right? A lot of the, the Black Dollies community at a, at a increasingly rapid rate, one of the things we're trying to do is make sure that as black people we support black businesses as well as as well as we support the other businesses. So Kwame Brathwaite deployed his photography from the late 1950s and throughout the 60s as an agent of social change. Brathwaite helped found the African Jazz Art Society and Studios and the Grandasa Models, popularizing the transformative idea Black is Beautiful by organizing events surrounded around Harlem's artistic community. The New York Historical Society's Bernard and Irene Schwartz Distinguished Speaker Series featured a talk with the artist's son, Kwame Samori Brathwaite, Tanisha C. Ford, and Khalil Gibran Muhammad in a discussion of his father's life and work.
Thank you for joining me for this edition of Backstage Pass with Leah Chang. Next time, we'll actually get to see the entire museum.